I am going to explain how to do a Rubik's Cube, and I'm not going to ex like tell you how to do it yourself. Just explain how the puzzle works. Now, I, I myself, when I was in 7th or 8th grade, I don't know, 12 years old or something, uh, except for two moves. And when I say move, I mean, especially as you finish the cube, there's certain moves that will only change certain aspects of the remaining cube. So, uh, two very difficult moves I, I learned from a booklet, uncharacteristically of me, usually, like, just have <laughs> been fine with not solving it, but I, I evidently I want to solve it. So one is these corner pieces. They can be rotated. You can rotate two at a time. So for example, let me just uh, take this one, these two. Okay, so see I've rotated just these two, right? See it's in the same correct spot, but it's rotated. They rotate in pairs like that. Okay, and so I can rotate them back to get back to the regular cube. Okay, and then the other one is to move, just to switch two of these. These are always switched in pairs. If you see three of these switched and the other one uh, right, and those are the only cubes that are wrong, then you for sure have uh, you know, a cube that's been taken apart and put back together wrong. Okay, so this one is like this. You'll see what I mean. with this so with this move I'm able to, to to switch the two cubes that I want okay now I'll mix it up and I'll I'll show you how the cube is put together this puzzle and it really all is about you know moving one thing is obvious but then you move a whole bunch of other cubes and so it's all about doing some move that in the end only changes it that very small select number of cubes getting down to being able to switch just a pair of cubes at a time, sub-cubes. Okay, now in terms of a mixed-up cube, and I've just mixed this cube up, it's funny, a lot of times when people would, will mix up a cube to see if you could do it, or want to watch you do it, they'll, they won't let you see, as if I could memorize backwards what they did. That would be way more impressive than just solving a puzzle. Okay, now I didn't ever learn any tricks for the, for the first layer. But you get the gist of how it works from doing the first layer. That the, the second and third layer is you figure out little moves that you memorize that do um, really tricky versions of what is common sense on the first layer. Now what I notice people just don't realize they need to take advantage of is, um, uh, I was just thinking how I have put dots on that yellow because it's so similar to that one. but. Uh, uh, maybe I should choose a side that didn't use that. But um, <clears throat> anyway, um, at the top, you you need to when you're you're making a layer. People often try to get all the white together, which is pointless and actually misleading. It, you, these are clues. All th three or two stickers are the clues to putting it together. So these two are lined up correctly already. So here's I need to find all the white ones and they have to have a place here. So like a clue of the next white one I need is these two are st together, so that's starting to be good. Well, if I look over here, the red, okay, I need a white and a red. There's gonna be one white and red. There it is, All right? So I just need to move that over there. And like I say, this can be common sense. Okay, it's down here uh, and I want it over there. So I slide it over there. Now you learn a, little, a few moves here that are common sense. Now I want to put this up there. Okay, but look, the, there's the white center one. You always start with the white center one because the center ones don't move relative to each other, but whatever. So this, I want to get this white one here so I easily can move it up here by, you know, moving these two down. Okay, but I've moved that out of the way. Okay, so you start to do a little juggling. It's like getting out of your own way while you do something. And you have a two dimensions, so Oops, out of camera. So you can move this out of the way, move this middle one out of the way, and then move this one up so it's by the red, and then this one can go back in the way. And now I have, you know, two red there. Oh, this third red doesn't count because it's yellow on top. Okay, so let's try to get this piece. 
this piece is going to be white and red. Now there's two white and red and another color corners. The blue one's already here, so we just need to find another white and red corner. Okay, here it is right here. White and red corner. It's got green. So, um, <clears throat> this one's kind of tricky. Uh, you got to transform it around. So I, you know, there's ways to do that. Like that. Do that a couple times. <clears throat> you just slide it in place. And so that's what you do for all of these. Okay, so you get a layer. Um, with this one, the centers are always, you know, rel stay relative to each other properly. So line up the centers with what they're on top. Then you got to do these pieces. That's easy because you got, okay, red and a blue. Let's see, can you see red and a blue? So I look on top, it's got to be on top or in one of the other spots. There's a red and a blue. Okay, so I have a little move. This one I made myself. Or should I? Okay. You move the red across from the red. So that can get the red and blue guy down there. And so on and so forth for the rest of these. This one's in place, but it's backwards, so I gotta move it up to the top. Just move any other one in there, and then uh, move it back in the right way. Uh, now missing yellow dot and blue, that's right there. Okay, so now we have the, the second layer. This final layer <laughs> is, um, you got to get the corners in place first, and that's because you can move these guys around if, without the corners in place. So I, I look for, you know, it's the right four corners, and they just might be mixed up. So, okay, I see there's two blues here, so I could put them on the blue side, but look, red and the yellow dot are on the wrong side. Oh, but on here, this corner is in the right place in this configuration. I keep looking at it, and you can't see it. That one is in the right place. It just needs to be rotated. And that one's in the right place and needs to be rotated. These two are in the wrong place. See, the red is supposed to be over here. So, I have a way to fix that. I can move two corners across without moving the other two corners. So I need to get the red just like this. I figured that one out myself too. This was when I was like 13 or whatever when I figured these. And when I learned the, the two steps I couldn't figure out. Um, okay, uh, okay, so now what we do is we rotate these. See, they're all in the right place. If you can see, they're in the right place. But these two are rotated correctly, but these two are not. Okay, so I do that move I showed earlier. I do mess this one up sometimes and have to redo it if I get lost because it's complicated and I just know how to do it. It's not clear to me how things get out of the way so that you don't mess up the rest of the cube. That's what's hard about these ones. Okay, so now those are all rotated correctly. And, but these things are in the wrong place. See the green and yellow should be over here, it's here. But look, the red is in the right place, just rotated and it flipped wrong. So I have, I can move these three in kind of, uh, either of these ways. So I move this like that. To okay. And some of these top moves that I did uh, were trial and error. It's not so much I knew what it would do, but I knew how to do something that wouldn't screw up the rest. I was careful not to screw up the rest. Just do my free motions and see what happens. You know, And then you go, oh, that's how you switch to. Okay, now everything's right except for these. And this is that uh, move. You, you always get down to this move, and so this is one of the moves that I had learned. Okay, that out of a little uh, sheet booklet solution thing. Okay, when I was a kid. How old was I actually? It was like, it was seventh, eighth, eighth grade, I guess. How old were you in eighth grade? 13. I was young for eighth grade. So I might have been 12, okay. 
Um, I also forget this one, but if I'm careful, it's easier to not forget it because this one makes sense. I can see how the juggling on this works a little bit. And that's how you do uh, cute 